there was a poem I had here somewhere. I did think, you know what? I saw this poem. Ah, shall we? Uh, I don't know if we should. This is one of Fani Badayuni. Fani. <laughs> Fani in Arabic means perishing from the word Fana. Okay. So as I would tell you, Usikum anta tafano fi hubbillah qabla an tafno bi hukmillah. Allah. See, to advise you to self, to annihilate the ego in the love of God before you perish by his command. <laughs> Allah, Allah. But he says, Har nafas umre guzashta ki hai mayyit fani. Zindagi naam hai mar mar ke jiye jane ka. I suppose I'll read that another day because I think we've kind of moved on from that point. Otherwise, I'll just keep going back. But he is an epic poet. I, I tell you who I have been going through recently as well. That's uh, Abdul Hamid Adam. I absolutely love Abdul Hamid Adam as well. <laughs> He's amazing, honestly. Oh, his poetry. He really... Uh, let me think of some that he um, that he says. He really uh, he likes to provoke as well. You see, he's one of those provocative. But that the poets do that. You see, the poets do that because it's it's par it's a paradox. It's the motif of paradox that is adopted in poetry. So what they do is they they it's. They tease, <laughs> teasing me, they tease with this motif of, par of, of the paradox of taboo, that they push the boundaries of taboo to unsettle, but then to reconnect you with the divine. Because especially when they're speaking about divine stuff, uh, you'll get um, people like... Um, Abdul Hamid Adam, he says, uh, and many, all of them, Mir, all these people, they have this constant trope of uh, of the taboo, and they they intertwine that into the paradox. So they will, so for example, Mir saying, um, uh, what is? Uh, he says, Chor ke der kabe ko ayamir. You see, is that, that after there is, it's actually in a classical Arabic word as well, meaning a kind of temple of, but he's using it to differentiate it from Muslims. That Chor ke der kabe ko ayamir. Jis ko chahe khoda kharab ka. <laughs> you see, all of a sudden, he's, he says, after leaving the Deir, that temple, Mir has come to the Kaaba. And, and that's, you see, it's taking this avenue. And then what he does is he he applies the paradox, pushing the taboo. He says, Jisko chahe, whosoever God wants, he corrupts. And you're like, what? <laughs> you see, it's the, the volta, it's the turn that you think you're not expecting it. But in that taboo, what he's doing, it's the it's the, 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 the paradox of profanity. But he's pushing your your kind of safety zone, your comfort to make you question once again that you're not just falling into meaningless superstitious worship, are you? that ultimately it is still God. You see, because he's affirming Khuda, God. It's a, it's a huge, it's an immensely, you know, when you go into the, 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 the kind of the algorithm of what the poets are doing, it's very deep. It's not just like some people think, oh my God, that sounds profane. On some levels, of course, it's superficially profane, but that's how they... You see, that's how they get in to make you question once again existentially and not just to simply blindly submit, but to 
holistically submit to the will of God. It's amazing. And you see, Abdul Hamid Adam has loads like that as well. And he says, uh, Kese mahol mein, kis sidk se kya yaad aya? That in what environment, with what truthfulness, what, wow, what did we remember? Kya yaad aya? Humko, humko butkhane ki chokat par khuda yaad aya. <laughs> Says, Kese mahol mein ki sidk se kya yaad aya? Humko butkhane ki chokat par khuda yaad that he says it was at the doorstep of the place of idolatry. Allah, Butkhana is a place where idols are kept. One could also say it's it's a term the poets used for, you know, for beautiful people, for women that were had of astounding uh, beauty. They used to call them but as well in, in Urdu. And also Sanam, which also means an idol because they were kind of, it's the same, it's the reason goddesses are called that, but that's what the Urdu poets. But he's saying that at the doorsteps of this place of idolatry, of idols, I remembered God. <laughs> Allah. You see, once again, like just tampering on the profane, bringing in the paradox, but thereby reminding you of the divine. It's, it's incredible. And they do that and they do it so effectively. And they don't want you to get lost in, in these symbols. They want you to understand that there is a greater, like don't get lost, don't lose yourself in the symbols. Try to aspire to something higher, the divine. So this is why the, the Kaaba is often a common motif, a common trope used in Urdu poetry. So Abdul Hamid Adam in that same poem, I believe, he goes on to say, um, he says, um, there, see the Deir and the Kaaba is often one. There's this juxtaposing of the two as a motif amongst many Urdu legendary poets. Like all of these often, Mir, Ghalib, Dar, you know, Zawq, all these kind of people, Momin Khan, Momin, all these great people will use this. Adam, so he says, Deir ke beech khuda, or kaabe me patthar. Hame jo bhi yaad aya, bar wakt o baja yaad aya. So he says that, he says that amongst the temple I found God. You see that even if I was surrounded by idols, he's saying that I saw my connection with God, it, it, I found it in a place where you'd least expect it. You see, you've, you're lost in the world. You're in all these things. You're, submer you know, you're submerged. You're drowning. You're, all these things are happening. This is not the place you'll find God. But he found God. You see, never give up on hope. That there ke beech khuda. And then he juxtaposes it. With the paradox of the profane. <laughs> Allah. Or kabe me patar. He says, Oh, but, and, and what is the, in the Kaaba? There's a stone, the black stone. You see, showing that don't take your piety for granted. You don't want to become somebody that is ultimately. No different because of your arrogance. It's as though you're just worshipping a stone. Or kabe me patar. That hame chubi yad aya barvakto baja yad aya. That whatever and whenever we remembered, it was always on point and with great accuracy. Adam. <laughs> See, Ad, oh, it's amazing, honestly. I could just get lost in poetry for, for so long. I, I get into like, an, you know, when I hear it, I guess <laughs> I get proper excited. <laughs> it like brings me to life. It animates me. I love listening to this kind of poetry and love listening to people talking about it. And 